Let's talk about the masks. When did you decide to do it? And what was the biggest hurdle in retooling your factory from pillows to masks? Well, we're very, we're very good at, um, at scaling. We're very good at changing, adapting. We, I've been through this so many times, so I think, and I have a great crew, we're able to do that. In a, and this was about, um, I don't know the exact date, it was five days before I ended up at the Rose Garden for that speech, but, but it was like the, the week before when we started, but the week before that, I go. I told my uh, some of my uh, sewers. I said, "You guys make me some mass prototypes." And then I had to go out and do due diligence and find out what would be legal to you know to have to allow. And I and I first time I bought the wrong elastic. You're not supposed to have latex. So I had oh, to uh, try, dump that. And and uh, these are just little things I knew existed because I've been in the fabric business. I've been in this. Well, it's, it, the real good thing is my fabric matched exactly for the cloth mask and even overshot, they wanted like 200 thread count. We were like 400 and some. And, but then we took all the sewing machines. The biggest, the biggest hurdle was making my company at that time, nobody really knew <clears throat> what, safe, what safe was. So we had to make it safe for my employees. So I made it, uh, you know, eight, six, eight feet apart. I overdid it, eight feet apart. We all gave masks when they came in. We sanitized with this 60 day sanitizer. I wanted them to feel safe to come to work. So that was a, you know, it was a challenge, but using all our space, we had enough space and everybody actually, we've always felt like we're helping people, you know, whether it's been a hurricane, we've given, you know, 80,000 pillows to Hurricane Harvey. We always love to help campfires in California. Well, this was on a scale unprecedented and my yeah. employees, they, uh, they love their, um, what we do as a company and, and it goes all the way down. And then, and then getting uh, getting other places that make my pillow, like the covers for the toppers, we got them on board right away too. And and uh, nice. I would say it was, there wasn't anything one harder than the other. It was basically knowing knowing the right thing to make. And there was a lot of phone calls getting because everyone's going, well, no, you need these N95s or KN95s. They said, no, we want to make yeah. cloth masks that help. You know, how many okay. masks are you making now? We're upwards around. Um, between all the, on my other four places, a little over 50,000 a day. Wonderful. How does someone buy one of those? We don't, we're not selling them. We've, we, we've, what we've done is we've, we've um, donated a thousand, a ton, probably hundreds of thousands, but we, uh, yeah, it is hundreds of thousands, probably. Um, and what we've done is we started with the hospitals. We're going in layer of needs. You know, we're not selling to the public. We're going in layer of needs. First, it was the hospitals. Then it was like um, nursing homes. It was first responders. It's uh, cities. Many cities have called us and uh, VA hospitals and all these things. So we have a whole do task they know, force. Do they know that they're getting a my pillow mask, or is it just a mask? They don't know. We don't put my pillow on it. I'm not. I you know this is a terrible pandemic. I'm not gonna. I believe we're not gonna be. Um, I, I know some things where there's uh, good things coming, and I don't believe that masks are going to be a long-term thing. And mm -hmm. and um, you know, I don't all the all the stuff you see online and stuff now where they're making designer masks. I mean, that's good for now, but I don't plan on staying in so that particular part of the business. Slater Crusaders, thanks for watching the first on YouTube. If you want more, like, subscribe. We got plenty.